Man, oh man, did some news just drop about Sony and how a lot of their first-party games will be coming to the PlayStation 4. Long gone are the days of gamers saying you need a PS5, when in reality, you don't. Let's get into how Sony has misled a lot of their fans and how this generation is much different than the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One generation. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and that like button. The support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to be notified on future content, hit that small little bell icon. It helps the channel out a bunch. But enough of that, let's get into this pretty big interview that Herman Holtz had for PlayStation's blog. He's the head of Sony's first party teams and a vital part of Sony PlayStation's future when it comes to games in the PlayStation 5 console. And in an interview, he was very blunt in what the PlayStation 5 console is going to provide for the next couple of years, but also upfront about where some perceived next generation only games are going to launch. You know, games like God of War Ragnarok and Gran Turismo 7. Games that were announced last year and given a release date of 2021. And one of the most talked about things about those games is that they're aiming to be PS5 only games. At least that's what Sony fans wanted to believe for some weird reason. In fact, a lot of media types were saying that God of War Ragnarok was going to be exclusive to the PS5 and that was always the plan. Well, when you look at this interview, that's obviously not the case as Herman confirms the game is going to be coming to PS4 where they have 110 million PlayStation 4 owners. Here's what was said. PlayStation Blog, how does PS4 factor into PlayStation Studios development vision? Is it still a focus eternally for future game development? Here's what Herman said, it very much is. You can't build a community of over 110 million PS4 owners and then just walk away from it, right? I think that'd be bad news for fans of PS4 and frankly, not very good business. Where it makes sense to develop a title for both PlayStation 4 and PS5, for Horizon Forbidden West, the next God of War, GT7, will continue looking at that. And if PS4 owners want to play that game, then they can. If they want to go on and play the PlayStation 5 version, that game will be there for them. That being said, it's also very important to have show pieces for PS5, hence the development of Returnal and Ratchet that are exclusive to PS5. So as you can see right here, the next God of War is going to be on the PS4, and according to Sony fans, it's going to be held back by the PlayStation 4, so it's not a true next generation title. That's just their logic and something that's been talked about a lot. Even when a lot of people have told them that's not the case and it's going to show next generation features on the PS5 yet have some of those features scaled down for the PS4 because that's what this is, it's cross generation. But the most telling part about this is that Herman says that's not releasing the game on PS4 is just not good business. That to me shows one thing, it's that the top executives at Sony want to make as much money as possible. And of course they do. They're a multi-billion dollar company that wants to get their software and hardware in as many people's hands as possible. That means putting games on not only the PS5, but also the PS4, like they're doing with almost all of their first party games. And the real comedy will start to happen when they release their games on PC, which will make the PS5 irrelevant like some people claim the Xbox is irrelevant. When in reality, that's just not the case at all again. Which is something that Herman talked about again when he was asked about PC and where it stands moving forward. PlayStation Blog. How does PC fit into the worldview of PlayStation Studios moving forward? Here's what he said. We are still early on in our planning for PC and Horizon Zero Dawn has been very successful. I think it shows there's an appetite from gamers outside the PlayStation ecosystem to experience the amazing portfolio of games that PlayStation fans have enjoyed for years. But I want to emphasize that PlayStation will remain the best place to play our PlayStation Studio titles at launch, but we do value PC gamers and will continue to look at the right times to launch each game. Ben Studio just released the PC version of Days Gone on May 18th, so that's about two years after the PS4 release, and I hope that a new set of fans can and will enjoy that title, and that's the goal. We want to reach new gamers who haven't yet experienced the great stories, characters, and worlds that we've built. Releasing games on PC will not come ever at the expense of building an exciting lineup of great console games. 
Would you look at that? Sony released one of their biggest new franchises in Horizon Zero Dawn on the PC and saw great success. Something that a lot of people said would happen if Sony brings their games out on the PC platform. And it's not just Horizon Zero Dawn. We also saw Days Gone get a pretty awesome PC port. While I didn't enjoy Days Gone all that much, the performance on the PC is pretty incredible when compared to the PS5 port that the game got. And to throw even more gas on the fire, there's already confirmed leaks that Uncharted 4 will get a PC release also. Now I know a lot of people will yell from the rooftops that these are older games and they don't matter. Those people are just damage controlling the fact that Sony is looking at PC releases in the near future. Will they discount the PS5 and not release games there? Of course not. They'll have their architecture and development kits prioritize the PlayStation console game first. But over time, they'll continue to bring out a lot of their first party games to the PC platform. And some gamers will just wait to play the game on PC and skip out on the PS5 console considering they only want the exclusives on that machine. To me, this is great because it gives gamers options and we have to realize that Sony is making a lot of games right now, which is something Herman talks about right here. PlayStation Blog. Are you able to give us snapshot of the total number of titles that PlayStation Studios are currently developing for PS4 or PS5? Herman. Well, we have a lot going on right now. PlayStation Studios have more than 25 titles in development. Almost half of these are new IP. The other half, they're titles that are set in franchises that PlayStation fans already know and love. So it's quite a lot. As we can see right here, Sony does have a lot of games in development, and I have a feeling a lot of those games will come to the PC sooner or later. Will they bring them day and date on the PC platform? That depends on the development cycle and how they want to port the games over. Because when Sony released Horizon on the PC and all those other games, the launch wasn't that smooth. Horizon had a lot of implementation problems that needed to be patched. Now that's expected from developers that haven't made their games for PC before. And it's something that's pretty smart of Sony to do. They want to release these games over time for now, so they understand what it takes to port a game to the PC, or even develop a game for the PlayStation and the PC at the same time. So I expect to see a lot of these 25 games in development coming to the PC, PS5, and of course, the PlayStation 4. Which brings me to Sony and Jim Ryan talking about generations and how they believe in them. That had to be one of the worst things Sony could have said before the launch of the PS5, because it's just a blatant lie they told so they can make people buy the new piece of hardware. Thinking that a lot of the exclusives coming out will only be played on the PlayStation 5, all the while they always had plans for Horizon Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7, and of course God of War, some of their biggest franchises come to the PlayStation 4 also. Throw in Miles Morales and a couple other games, you can see that Sony is going to support the last generation hardware for a very long time. In fact, they said they'll support the PS4 hardware for the next three or four years. This is after they said, oh, we believe in generations because they knew people wouldn't flock to the PS5 unless they felt there were exclusives for them to play there. All the while, Xbox was honest and upfront and said they'll support the Xbox One consoles for the next two or so years. In fact, a lot of the games Xbox announced from their Xbox Game Studios were shown to only come to PC and the Xbox Series X. That's something that was hated on because some of the new games coming out will be on the Xbox One. Games like Halo Infinite, where fanboys yelled that it was being held back by the Xbox One. Well, with that same logic in mind, every single game that Sony is making is held back by the PlayStation 4, minus a few outliers that aren't their biggest franchises. Yet to me, the only thing I see is Xbox being transparent and honest with their fans, all the while Sony is telling half-truths and keeping information from their fans to benefit themselves. Something that Clobrio mentions right here in a tweet. The only difference between the absolutely reasonable cross-gen strategies between Microsoft and Sony is that only one of them was honest about it from the very beginning. And there you have it everyone, one company was honest from the get-go. They didn't hide behind generations, they showed gamers exactly what they were doing and how they were going to do it. While Sony kept things from gamers and blatantly lied to their faces in order to push their next generation console. Does this cross-gen strategy annoy me? No, it doesn't. In fact, it's something I've said is a lot easier now because of the architecture that games are being made on. What truly annoys me is the fact that Sony said certain things and stayed quiet for a very long time and then decided to have digital events pretending that a lot of the games being announced are PS5 exclusives. 
while shadow dropping after the events that those same games will be coming to the PS4 and PS5. And let's not act like they didn't see gamers asking if it's exclusive or if it's cross-generation supported. That's something I think they wanted to ignore until they met certain sales numbers on their consoles, because they know that some people would have waited for the PS5 to launch some games before jumping on it. Considering both Xbox and Sony had a pretty weak launch lineup of games, yet now we're back here seeing God of War being cross-gen and we're seeing gamers call out Sony for their blatant lies. Let's hope that changes and Sony starts to act like Xbox is acting, which is upfront and not hiding things from gamers. Because the more you're honest with gamers, the better your platform will perform. Something that Xbox sees as clear as day, while Sony seems to ignore. Let's hope things start changing over there, because while I love Sony's exclusives, I want to know exactly what I'm getting and where it's coming from, from their first party studios. But enough of what I think about all of this, tell me what you think about all of this. Are you surprised that God of War is going to be cross-gen? Does this hold back all Sony first party games? Do you even care about the cross-gen support? Did Xbox handle this a lot better than Sony did? What could Sony do to fix their missteps? Are you even going to buy a PS5 now? Go down below and let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button and that like button. The support helps out the channel more than you know. And give me a follow on Twitter at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my latest videos. Plus, I love interacting with everyone there. So get on Twitter and let's talk about gaming. Also, follow me on Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Zalker87, just like my channel name. See what games I'm playing and let's compete in achievements for the month. So right now, I'm playing a lot of games, but mainly I've been jumping on Rocket League and Battlefield 5. I'm really enjoying Battlefield 5 with all the updates it's gotten, plus the frame rate boost. I'm playing it on PC, Xbox Series X. I'm just having a lot of fun with the game. Plus, they added some new maps I didn't even know about during launch. So now I'm having great fun, and it's like a game that's completely new to me. And I'm excited for the new Battlefield announcement that's coming next week. Battlefield is one of my favorite first-person shooters, and I've really missed the new releases, and I can't wait to see the new Battlefield at the end of this year or the the announcement that's coming next week but let me know where you're playing are you playing something right now on your xbox your pc or your ps5 are you waiting for a game to come out like ratchet and clank or something else coming out later this summer let me know down below where you're playing because that's what we're here for this is talk games and that's all for now thanks for watching and until next time remember enjoy your gaming later